Hi, I'm Gustavo, a platform engineer from Pomelo. And today I want to tell you how to build a secure and scalable self-service infrastructure platform. Let's start with some introduction. Pomelo is a startup that offers B2B services to help other companies to build their vintage products. With Pomelo, any company from Latin America can issue cards for their users and process their payments with short integration time. The company was born in April 2021 with an ambitious goal, and as the infrastructure and platform team, we had to help to fulfill it. We had many applications to launch, and we thought that to get high speed and not to be a bottleneck, we needed to offer to developers a secure and controlled way to create infrastructure in the cloud. Why didn't we use tickets? Because it won't scale for us. Pomelo has a lot of services and we cannot handle their needs without letting down other projects and will also be the slow part of the process. We didn't want that. We thought that developers should be responsible for the infrastructure of their applications. So we decided to build a self-service infrastructure platform and we call it Rocket. The goal was developers creating infrastructure in a controlled way. Let's talk about the requirements for the platform. We identified three main points that we want to achieve in our platform. The first one is access and permissions. We had different business units and we wanted only the developers that belong to a business unit can create, modify or delete the infrastructure of the applications in that business unit. The second one is enforce good practices and security. As a PCI compliance company, we needed to enforce good practices in terms of security for the cloud resources. And the last one is user-friendly too. We had different kinds of users. Some developers know a lot about infrastructure and some others don't. So we needed to build something that makes fit with that and be easy to use for anyone. The, choose, the tools that we choose to build the first version of our platform quickly and with our requirements in mind was AWS Service Catalog and CloudFormation. With Service Catalog, you can create products. A product is a template that defines a group of resources. Examples of products that we have created are database cluster, Redis cache, application role, S3 bucket, etc. I'll show you an example soon. Another important entity in Survey Catalog is the portfolio. A portfolio is a group of product templates and users or roles that have access to it. You can assign roles or users to the portfolios so they, they can only create, modify, or delete infrastructure in their portfolio. And the plus is that to use Service Catalog, users don't need to have permissions to create resources. They only need permissions to use Service Catalog so you can restrict the access to create other resources and ensure that cloud infrastructure can only be created through service catalog pros. This is, an import, this is important because if someone modifies the resources out of service catalog, the next product update will undo the modifications. Service catalog also offers a form created with the parameters that you define in the template so the developers can use it to create their products as a user interface, and you don't have to worry about that. These properties can help you to create a basic but very useful interface in a really short time. To understand the concept of a product, I want to explain one. Let's define a database product as the ones that you pick when you want a relational database for your application. In a database product, you will create the database itself, obviously, but you can also create a security group for the database and a rule that allow access only from the owner application, a secret for the username and password, an encryption key and the access for the owner application role, read and write instances, and whatever you think it could be useful to create for every database in your platform. Your users think they are created just a database, but they receive an encrypted, secure, and efficiently created database with the best configurations, controlled for us, but without our intervention.
Let's talk about some important tips when you define your products. Use the application as the curve for the platform and around it, attach all their products. Keep in mind that you can have a lot of applications and each application could have a lot of products. Use name conventions. For example, you can define a convention in the application roles names so you can build it with the params that users fill, like the application name and the business unit. With CloudFormation, you can create policies to assign permissions to resources building the role name dynamically, and that makes the job easier to users because they don't need to remember IDs or difficult resource names. Defining tags for each resource in the template help you to know, for example, how much a specific application or an entire business unit spends. You can also define policies with tag conditions so users can only download files for their buckets, record for the database, or any other access to other resources. Each application must have their own security group and IAM role, so you can restrict the access to the resources. It's easy to be tempted to create resources in a give permission to everyone, but it's not recommended. Enforcing security should be one of the most important goals in a platform team. Define a flag to determine if a product is for testing or productive purposes. This will help you to define different levels of properties depending on the end use of the resource. Related with the last one, enforce low cost configurations for test products, small databases, clusters with only one node, low cost storage class, infrequent access configurations, etc. Enforce encryption for productive resources. This will help you to improve the security of your data. And the last one, simplify the products. Try to reduce the number of parameters for the products using techniques like string interpolation, conditionals, or transformations to make the job of creating infrastructure faster and easier. Too many parameters can confuse the user. But what about next? How do we scale our platform? While your platform grows, you need to add some other features. You start to have more complex requirements and you want to do things that CloudFormation doesn't allow you, like create infrastructure in other cloud providers or add more complex logic to the static CloudFormation language. For those things and many others, we decided to create an API to offer one single interface where you can create products. And in the background, you can still use Service Catalog with its API. Now you can add more complex validation and trigger creation of products from other sources, like a backstage instance, as we did, a custom front end, a Slack bot, Jira, or any other tool. But the process of creating infrastructure takes its time so the API cannot handle the requests and wait to return a response until the resources have been created. You have to build it as an asynchronous process. Here's where Argo Workflows appears. With Argo Workflows, you can define processes with different steps developed by you with any language. So you can simulate the CloudFormation task, but for any other thing you want to create a GitHub repository, a resource in another cloud provider, or whatever you need. And the API can trigger these jobs using a webhook, a queue message, a GitHub event, or many other sources. This opens a range of possibilities to do whatever you need and think it's better for your users and your platform. To finish this presentation, we know that the infrastructure provisioning is a key part of the platform. The decisions that you take about it will decide if you will have problems administering the resources to maintain the platform secure, to save costs, and to improve the process of releasing new business products. Offering a controlled way to create infrastructure will save you a lot of time to your infrastructure team that could be spent in another projects. And it will save time to developers too, 
because they don't need to wait for you to solve their needs. There are a lot of great and different tools that you can choose to help you to build your platform. And the decision of what you will use at the end will be taken considering different conditions. But I think all service platform infrastructure must meet these three points, security, scalability, and efficiency. Thank you.